All right, so let's continue our discussion about evaluating multiple projects. And uh, last time we talked about how to use uh, different methods to evaluate multiple uh, projects. Now, all the things we learned, right? The uh, P, uh, present worth, future worth, um, annual worth, or you know MARR or IRR, all those uh, methods we use can be we learned can be used to evaluate multiple projects. But all of them so far has been based on either one cash flow or cash flows, different cash flows, but all have the same equal lives, right? However, a lot of time they may not be like that, right? So. Many times the cash flows can have different life span. Uh, let's say you have three projects. One will give you 20% of interest and uh, uh, for two years, and the other will give you 15% of interest for three years. Right? So which one is a good choice? Which one is a good choice? Right? Before we also talk about how different companies want to use different MARR to decide what type of projects they want to take, right? If people want to take a long-term large infrastructure projects, then the MRR will be lower. And the short-term projects, then the MARR will be higher. And uh, uh, it, it's really hard to say that we shouldn't take a long-term project. So we should only build short-term projects and make quick money. Sometimes it, it doesn't work that way. Um, that's why um, it's really important to talk about, to understand how do we compare different uh, choices. And uh, one way, uh, if we do have multiple projects with different cash flows, uh, uh, with different time spans, then usually we make two assumptions. Uh, well, either assumptions. One is a re repeatability assumption. So basically what we mean by repeatability assumption is that the study period over which the alternatives are being considered is either indefinitely long or equal to a common model of the lives of the alternatives. So either we think that the project is going to be last infinity in in infinitive long, indefinitely long, or uh, another case is that uh, we can we can multiple the lives and it's not going to change the cash flow. Right? In this case, the economic consequences that are expected to happen in an alternative's initial use for lifespan will also happen in all succeeding lifespans. So we can actually replacement. So use the example we talked before, right? If a 20%, one project have 20% of um, uh, period, uh, sorry, 20% of interest rate and it's lasted for two years. And then the other one have 15% of interest and last for three years. Then what we can do if we assume repeatability, right? If we think that the repeatability assumption is valid, then we basically do the first project three times, right? It's two year, we do it three times. All the second and third time, they still have the same cash flow as the first time. Then over the six year period, uh, the cash flow repeats three times, but now it's ex extended to six years. Why we want to do that? because we can do the same thing for the other one, right? Remember the other case is three years and the, risk, uh, the interest rate is 15%, right? Same thing, we can repeat that for, uh, for another time and then three plus three, we will have six years as well. Now, both of the cash flows are in six, six years. Then in this case, we can do the, uh, we can do the comparison. In this case, we can do the comparison. Um, another assumption 
people tend to use is the co-termination assumption. So basically what we're trying to do is that in this assumption, we use a finite and identical study period for all alternatives, for all the alternatives we set at the same period. The planning horizon combined with appropriate adjustment to the estimated cash flows puts the alternatives on a common and a comparable basis. So that's what we're trying to do. Let's say there are several projects, uh, several projects, and one has cash flow of five years, the other have six, next have eight, the other one have four. Then what we try to do is that we set a common period, let's say six years. That's what we want to use, right? It's the middle of this uh, for cash flows. And then we, we determine that we do certain adjustment to make sure they all terminate on year six. And then we can do the comparison. So obvious, right? If we do this, in some cases, an alternative can have a shorter period. This project may be only four years. Well, for six years, uh, if you decide to do six years, it's, it's not that long, right? So if the life of an alternative is shorter than the study period, the cost of contracting the services may be used for the remaining time. So that's how we deal with it, right? In this case, the cost of contracting the services may be used for the remaining time. Then, if the life of an alternative is longer than the study period, a re-estimated uh, market value at the end of the study period is used as a terminal cash flow. In that case, we basically think at this, uh, at the end, let's say this project should be Alternatively, originally it should be eight years long, right? If they end at six years, uh, we, we force it to end at six years, then we basically estimate the market value at the end and use that a terminal cash flow. So all the money in seven and eight years, we're going to com convert that into a market value at the year six, and then use that as the terminal cash flow use that as a terminal cash flow, right? So uh, that's basically what we are trying to do, right? Um, usually with, well, I mean, although there are two assumptions, but really usually what we are, uh, we like to use repeatability assumption. So basically we think that the project has an indefinite horizon. Uh, in this case, we estimate the initial useful life are repeated in a subsequent period. So keep repeating. Um, you can definitely use uh, present value or future value, present worth or future worth. But uh, really in this case, um, AW, AW of each alternative over its useful life is the best choice. In this case, we can select, we can compare all the annuities across different uh, projects and select the one with the best value, right? In this case, if it has an indefinite horizon, especially, right? If the project have a definite horizon, um, you uh, do, uh, do the AW, find out the annuity is the best choice and the most convenient choice. Uh, co-termination assumption sometimes we do use, but this is only if the repeatability assumption cannot be applied. Only in this case. Usually if we can do, we use repeati repeatability assumption. If it cannot be applied, then um, sometimes we'll use a co-termination assumption. Uh, in this case, we definitely just uh, define a uh, specific study period and do all the conversion we mentioned before and then uh, to find out the cash flow and uh, to find out the cash flow and then to determine the values of each cash flow.
in this case, we can do the comparison, right? So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a few examples for sure. Here's one example, how do we do the repeatability assumption? Uh, basically, let's say for this project, right? Let's say for this project, um, project A has six years, project B have four years, right? They are not, they do not end at the same time. It's really hard to do the um, analysis directly. So what we do is we extend that to a certain period and then uh, we can now they all end at the same time right they all end at the same time then in this case we are going to we can calculate the present value and the future value right we can calculate the present value and the future value obviously you know in this case uh, four and six the the minimum number um, to make sure that they both end at the same time, repeat them to, cer to certain amount of a certain number of times, then they end at the same year. The minimum one is 12. Obviously, you can extend this to 24 years, same thing, right? You can extend this to 36 years. We don't need to do that. That's complicates the issue. We don't, we don't need to not necessarily uh, prolong the, the, um, uh, the, the cash flow, right? So extension works, um, but like we said, right, uh, many times uh, the convenient way is to find out the annuity, right? Yeah, we, it's hard to compare the present value or the future value in this case, but we can compare annuity, right? For six years, if we break it to annuity, then we can find out, okay, a, what is on, uh, uh, for each year, what will be our uh, revenue, what will be our cost, right? Project B is the same. We can find out the annuity uh, as well. Then we can do the comparison. Just use the annual work to do the comparison, right? So here's an uh, example to calculate. See if we can calculate this. Uh, let's say we give the project we have before, right? Give them values. Consider two mutually exclusive alternatives, A and B, right? Both with useful lives of four and six years, respectively. If we think that MARR equals to 10%, which feasible alternative do you think is better? Which do you think is better? Okay. First thing we want to do always is to draw the cash flow, right? First thing we want to do is definitely to draw the cash flow. And um, What uh, here is the cash flow I draw for A, right? Here is the cash flow I draw for A. So the cash flow I draw here, you can see is that um, we have uh, for project A, the capital investment at the beginning is 3,500, right? So it's negative 3,500 and then we also have each year we have a certain revenue, which is 1,900, that's the revenue. And the expense is negative 645. So uh, revenue is upper arrow, uh, up, onward arrow, and then the um, annual expense is the downward uh, arrow, right? So we can draw this. And then basically once we draw this, right, uh, we already can easily find out 
there's actually already an annuity there, right? From year one, year two, year three, year four. Basically, what we have is 1,900 minus 645. That's already give us an annuity, right? The only thing uh, not in this annuity is just the present value, negative 3,500. What we can do is that apply our function before and convert this basically to the basically we can convert this to the annuity here right so i'll give you uh, a few minutes to calculate what it will be the annuity okay i hope you had a chance to calculate and the result here is 150.85 so um that's basically uh, uh based on this cash flow we calculate the uh the annuity right if we do the assumption we have the repeatability assumption that this cash this project's going forward forward indefinitely going forward then this is a cash flow this is a cash flow right then this is the annuity we can use to compare um, another way to do this, remember what we talked before, was to do something like this, right? To extend the project to a certain year, so all the projects end at the same time, right? So that's what we're going to do here. What we're going to do is, see, we have the original cash flow, right? So we're going to repeat this twice, and then we're going to use this to calculate what will be now now see this this is since it's four years right so right oh, we said if we repeat two times then it's going to be it's three times we repeat it three times another two times um so we're going to get 12 years and then for the six year project we repeat one once it give us 12 years as well right um, but do you see any problem with this cash flow? Did we do this right? Did we repeat this correctly? Take a minute to think about it. I hope you see this is problematic, right? Uh, the reason this is problematic is that let's count. We said this is going to extend to 12 years, but really what we have is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We already have 15. That's not right, right? We said we want to repeat twice to make it 12 years. How can it be 15 years? The problem is that, see, we start from zero when the project, when the previous project finish, the next project already starts. The cash flow, the capital expense, the capital investment start here, start here. So the correct cash flow is something like this. In this way, we have 12 years, right? We have one, two, three, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? That's why we always have this at year zero. So the next year having to start, we already start our investment, right? In this way, now we are actually extending the project to 12 years. And then now, okay, now basically we have a new cash flow. The cash flow is at year zero, year four, and year eight. We spend um, three thousand five hundred dollar, and then all, in all the other year we make one thousand nine hundred dollar, and then lose six hundred and forty five dollar. So this is new cash flow. Let's calculate the annuity. I'll give you a minute to calculate the annuity. Maybe you need uh, two or three minutes to calculate the annuity. But take your time, you can pause the video.
All right, maybe this is another surprise, but I hope you, the annuity you calculated is still $150.85, and $85, which makes sense, right? If you think about it, it totally makes sense. You, 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 you have to, you need, you should have that cash flow. See if you convert this here, and then that's give you 150. Basically, you repeat this another two, two times. The annuity shouldn't change, right? For all these four years, their present value, their present year is this, right? We basically add a number, add a four year on it. It doesn't really change the annuity, right? Whatever you calculate the annuity from here should be here and should be here as well. So whatever you calculate it should always be annuity. That's why we said it's more convenient to just calculate the annuity, to calculate AW instead of trying to do the re, uh, uh, repeat the project multiple times and then can try to find the present value and the future value, right? So now for project, uh, sorry, the label is wrong. This should be project B, right? But for project B, we know we don't want to repeat it again. We don't want to extend the six year project to a 12 year project. We just do it once, just do it once. And then it be, uh, we, we just calculate this cash flow. We just calculate this, back, this cash flow. And uh, the annuity here is $331.96. That's no matter how many times you repeat this project, just remember, uh, remember whatever you calculate should be the same, should be the same. The annuity will not change, right? So, um, the last slide is just uh, the summary of all the formulas we talked before. You see, we talked about MARR and IRR and all those informations, all those, um, examples, calculation, they all based on this. They all based on this. And then no matter how complicated the cash flow looks like, as long as you understand the basic concept, you can apply uh, the formulas we use and find the right result. Find the right result. Okay, um, that's actually the end of all our lectures because the craziness caused by the virus, we are not going to be able to cover the rest, uh, uh, the, the two lectures we mentioned in, we, we, we listed in our syllabus. Uh, I will find a supplementary reading and maybe video for you. Feel free to check them. They're optional, but they will not be in our final exam. Uh, on Thursday, on Thursday, we will have our review, uh, the, the last review, um, review uh, basically we will review a few questions to, uh, to help you prepare for the final exam. But um, uh, that's uh, all the lecture ends today. And also I will uh, use uh, the, the, the time between um, Thursday uh, to our final exam to upload a few extra Python uh, tutorial related to statistics. Um, I hope you will have time to check them as well. Again, they are optional. Um, uh, uh, okay, I'll talk to you again on Thursday. See you.